Good morning and happy Friday, everyone. And welcome to this session of Balance in Life. We'll be talking about ways to treat ourselves. I'm Crystal Tyler Mackey, happy to welcome you on behalf of the Virginia Cooperative Extension Human Development Program team and NC State University. Uh, joining us today as our panelists are Adam Downing with Virginia Cooperative Extension, Dr. Tanya Price, also with Virginia Cooperative Extension and Virginia 4-H, and Adam Hodges with West Virginia State University. So we will have our three panelists uh, share some ways that they are recharging and rejuvenating right now. And then at the end, we'll have an opportunity for a Q&A, which will take those in the chat box. So without further wait, we'll go ahead and get started with our first speaker, Adam Downing. Adam. Thank you, Crystal. Um, it's nice to be with you all. Um, I'm a forestry and natural resources extension agent for, extent, for uh, the Northern District of Extension. And I've got to tell you that uh, the first thing that comes to mind with that treat yourself uh, kind of tagline is ice cream. So uh, sometimes uh, the anecdote to my own treating myself is uh, this part, getting outside and uh, burning some of those calories off. So um, I stole this uh, socially distant, naturally near from Penn State Cooperative Extension. They've been doing a series um, for the last uh, few uh, weeks since this whole thing began, and that's what they're calling it uh, in their natural resources uh, school. And uh, they're uh, doing a bunch of different videos. And so while people stay away physically from each other, there is an opportunity to, to get even closer perhaps to nature. And this is something that I think a lot of people know intuitively, uh, the value of, of uh, experiencing nature, being outside. Uh, there are some things that uh, even I myself kind of forget to do to leverage this to the best of, of um, of what it has to offer for us in terms of our uh, emotional health, uh, physical health, and even spiritual health. Um, there's a book here that you'll see uh, in the corner of this picture called Last Child in the Woods. That was a book that was published in 2005, and at the time, there were seven studies, uh, more or less, that uh, kind of supported the emotional um, and physical well-being of children at, at, and getting outside. This was at the time when, you know, the screens started becoming really big in, in the life of, of young people and, and for adults too, for that matter. And so uh, he coined a term in this book called nature deficit disorder. And um, you probably get the idea of what that is uh, by its term. It's not a medical term, but it is a, a reality in that uh, as we have a deficit in our inputs from nature, there's cost to that for us as, as humans, as individuals, with, uh, with attentiveness, with, um, with uh, interacting with others, with interacting with our environment. Um, and so if this topic at all interests you, I'd encourage you to read that book. In the 15 years since it's been published, there are now thousands of studies that support the premises lined up in this book. But I'm not gonna get into all the research kind of stuff. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what this means for us, what we can do, what I try to do. And, and this is a good encouragement for me to kind of uh, hold me a little bit accountable to use some of these own things that I know about. But sometimes I get tied up with everything else I got to do and don't make time for myself to, uh, to take care of some, some things that are important so that we can keep going. So the obvious, I think, is, is observing. So you go for a walk, right? And you kind of notice this over here, you notice that over there, um, but I would put those in the kind of in the middle of the macro and the micro. So take an opportunity to look at the big picture, maybe sliding flat on your back on the grass and looking up at the sky. Maybe it's getting down close to the dirt level, looking at a bug, looking at a bud on a branch, looking at a flower more closely than you've looked at it before. We tend to look at things from, you know, a few feet away. Get up close. You might need, like I do now, your reading glasses to see up close, but, um, but take time to actually pause. In fact, I was waiting for someone this morning, meeting them, and uh, he was running a little late, and so I got to look around, and I noticed something that I wouldn't have noticed if I had not been waiting, which was droppings from an animal, and I thought, hmm, I see these droppings. I don't recognize those droppings. And I looked up, and I thought, I wonder if that's not bat. And sure enough, behind um, some uh, shutters, there's a colony of bats. 
And so there's a little opportunity that uh, was neat for me to, to discover this morning uh, while I was waiting. So take, so pause, um, sorry, I keep restarting my phone here to get my timer going. Um, take that opportunity to, to actually pause longer than you normally would when you're either outside taking a walk. I see a lot of families taking walks and that's great, but actually stop and look and take in uh, the different things that the environment has to offer you in, in, by way of your senses. So we tend to look at things, but there's also all our other senses, right? What are we hearing? What are we feeling on our skin, on our hands, on our feet? Take your shoes off and go barefoot. There's a lot of value to that um, in just feeling these things. Uh, I'm a tree guy. One thing I like to feel, this probably sounds really weird, but I love to feel tree bark. It feels, every species feels different. The texture, the softness, the hardness. So there's lots of things that you can feel. Pick up a stick, break it, um, and, uh, and feel things. So um, you can also taste and smell things in nature. Now be careful with the tasting. I'm not gonna send you off on, you know, uh, picking anything up you see and tasting it, but, um, but you can certainly smell almost anything. And you'll find some things that smell good, some things that don't smell good. And if you are into nature, you might also discover some things that uh, actually are fun to taste or even eat from nature. Um, something that some people get really get into, some of the master naturalists, um, uh, some of the uh, environmentalists is nature journaling. Um, I journal. I try to journal. I kind of go in and out. I don't really nature journal. That's a whole other aspect of observing, writing down what you're observing, sketching maybe along the way. And then kind of a, a companion to that would be study and observe things as they change. So this can happen really close to home. This can happen right outside your front door or in your backyard. Or if you're in an apartment, the nearest green space, the nearest green thing even that you have to you, just observe that as it changes through the seasons. Take pictures, make notes. And this can be something that is actually quite encouraging in these times when it seems like we cannot predict what tomorrow's gonna bring. And the truth is we never know what tomorrow's gonna bring, but nature, continues to be a pretty methodical and predictable um, surrounding in this time of, of chaos. So that can um, be something that can bring some peace to us. And then to kind of wrap up, um, uh, there's also opportunities to work in nature. So this is where, you know, that ice cream that I mentioned early on, on uh, kind of uh, comes into play. I can work to burn some of those ice creams off. Um, if you have property, you can work on invasive species. If you don't have property, you can join some kind of club that takes care of trails and, uh, or, or um, join a, a volunteer organization, other volunteer organization, and find opportunities to work outside. And that's also a great way to take in some nature and benefit from that. And um, I'll wrap up with uh, the other book that's mentioned there, My Side of the Mountain and Playing with a Stick. So when I was a kid, I um, read this book called My Side of the Mountain, which ties in with this picture. This is a big hollow tree that a much younger Adam Downing climbed into uh, quite a few years ago. And it, um, I thought it was appropriate for today. So I'm surrounding myself in this picture with nature. It's a little closer, you know, it's all this wood around me. And my side of the mountain, of course, the main character lives inside of a hollow tree for a while. And so even reading a book, if you're not able to get outside, read a book and that can inspire and encourage you to go out and enjoy and take in uh, these things. And if you have kids, they are great observers. Take them along with you and see what they notice that you can also notice. I've been enjoying that a whole lot with my 11 year old son. And uh, lastly, play with a stick. That is probably the best toy ever invented. Pick up a stick, throw it, break it, hit it against another stick, pretend like you're gonna make fire, whatever. So um, we can uh, keep going, but uh, I think that wraps up uh, eight minutes. And uh, thank you for, um, for sharing this time with me and allowing me to share some of these thoughts. Thank you, Adam, that was great. I am the next presenter. Good morning to everyone. I hope each of you all are doing well. 
My name is Tanya Price and I'm an Associate Professor and 4-H Extension Specialist with the Virginia 4-H Program at Virginia Tech. And it is a pleasure to have this opportunity to speak with you all this morning to not only share with you some of the strategies on how I'm coping, but also how I'm finding ways to treat myself during these unprecedented times. Like many of you, I'm working from home while also trying to homeschool a kindergartner and a second grader. And I'm doing all of this by myself as my husband is an essential worker. So I can tell you that the struggle is real in the Price household. <laughs> but I also know that I'm not alone and that we're all doing the best that we can. But I can guarantee you that after all of this is said and done and everything's all over, we're definitely going to have some very fun and interesting stories to share with one another. As you all are well aware, our days are now filled with Zoom meetings. We're having one Zoom meeting after another. And I was telling Dr. Tyler Mackey when she invited me to present at this session that my daughter, who is six, has now learned how to take advantage of the situation when I'm Zooming. She sees my Zoom meetings as her opportunity to explore around our house. And as an example, the other day she decided that she was going to get into my makeup drawer. I think this is something that she's been wanting to do for a while. Um, so when I was on my Zoom session, she saw that as the perfect opportunity. And she had makeup and lipstick all over her. It was all over her face, her neck, her arms, it was, it was everywhere. And while I'm on my Zoom meeting, she decides she's going to come in and not only show me how good she looks, but she was going to show everybody I was meeting with as she prances in front of the camera and waves to everyone. And all I could do was just <laughs> shake my head and apologize to everyone who was on the call. But I think this just goes to show that I understand the struggle of working from home while also homeschooling and the reason why treating yourself is so important. So I wanted to share with you some ways of how I'm treating myself during this time. And I think the first and most important tip I can share with you is having a glass half full mentality. And what I mean by that is instead of focusing on the list of things you can't do during this period of quarantine, take some time to focus on the things that you can do. Focus on learning a new skill. Focus on pampering yourself. Focus on reconnecting with what makes you happy. But whatever it is, try to stay um, focused and positive on the things that matter to you most. Some of the things that I enjoy doing include meditation. Meditation is one of the best things that I have found that I can do right now to relieve stress and to improve just my overall well-being. And if you've not meditated before and you're like me, <laughs> the first time I tried to meditate, I sat down and I tried to quiet my mind and then I was like, okay, now what? What am I supposed to do? Well, I have found um, help through apps such as OR and Calm. They walk you through meditation and mindfulness. And right now they're offering a free three month subscription, which includes unlimited access to mindfulness meditations and life coaching and inspiring stories and relaxing music. So if this is something that you think you, that you might have interest in, I definitely recommend that you check those apps out and it may be very helpful to you as it is to me. Another way I have found to treat myself and just find pure happiness is by making others happy. And some ways I have done this is by baking. And during this time, I have baked more than I ever have, I think, in my whole life. And when I'm baking, I like to involve my family because it's something that we really enjoy doing together as a family. So not only am I treating myself, myself by getting to spend some quality time with my family, but I also get to indulge in a sweet treat, which who doesn't like that? <laughs> but when we're all done, we take uh, some of our finished product and we drop it off at our neighbor's house with a note, just letting them know that we're thinking of them and how much we miss interacting with them on a daily basis. And for my friends who live further away, I have liked uh, to write notes and mail them so we can still remain socially connected even while we are socially distancing. And I have found that bringing a smile to other people's faces really helps to uplift my own spirits as well. So bringing joy to others is one of my favorite ways, I think, to treat myself. Another way I treat myself is just by engaging in some me time. For me, it's taking a nice long bubble bath and not getting out until the water gets cold. But I have two young children, so getting some me time isn't always possible. But my husband and I have agreed to allow each other 
to have at least one hour of me time three days a week. And having that time just to focus on me is so wonderful and something that I really, really look forward to. So I encourage you all to schedule some me time for yourself to do whatever it is that you enjoy, whether it's taking a bath or reading a book or going for a walk or a jog or enjoying nature like Adam was just mentioning, whatever it is, just enjoy some time focusing on yourself. If you all have ever done true colors, you'll understand that a goal personality is one that is structured and organized and really has a strong desire to feel a sense of accomplishment. And for those who know me, I have a very goal personality. <laughs> so one of the ways I treat myself is being able to accomplish something, um, being able to check something off my to-do list that I have been wanting to do for some time. And for me, projects can range from reading a pleasure book that has been on my shelf forever, or cleaning out a closet that I've been wanting to get to, or learning a new hobby. And just this past weekend, I found a beginner's crochet kit that has been in my closet, I think, for like two or three years now. And so I decided to, to get it off the shelf and open it up and teach myself how to crochet. And this is, this is what I did. Hopefully you can see it in the camera. It's not much, it's, it's little, but I really felt accomplished by that because I was able to get the technique down and I was able to check that off my list as something that I wanted to learn. So I really felt accomplished. And lastly, I like to treat myself just by having fun. One of the things that I have done most recently was I was invited to a theme a virtual happy hour Zoom meeting where several of my friends got together and we selected a virtual background and we dressed in a way that matched our background. So mine was a beach scene. Um, so I wore a sundress and I had a beach hat on and sunglasses and we each had food and drinks that we enjoyed and then we just enjoyed each other's company and I found that it was a lot of fun and a great way to de-stress and just end a long work week. So to conclude, I just want to remind you all to stay positive, to relax, to find your happy, to enjoy this time with your family. As you can see um, from the artwork on the slide, this is something that my family and I created to remember and kind of document this extra time that we're able to spend together because we realize that we are able to make memories every day together during this time. But most importantly, I just want to remind you all to remember to have fun. So thank you all for your uh, attention and I'll turn it over to our next presenter. Good morning, everyone. Um, Adam Hodges and uh, I am an extension agent in West Virginia. Um, I do community development. Um, and so I'm here this morning to talk to you some really about sort of what my background and my passion is, uh, which is arts. And uh, I'd like to uh, start. I don't know if my screen is sharing. Let me see. Um, so looks good, Adam. Okay, looks good. Okay, great. Thanks, Crystal. And so, uh, so you'll see behind me in in my Zoom picture, uh, I've got a drum set. So you know, creating is really important to me. And and whether that's creating a piece of artwork or whether that's um, you know creating a project, it's great to follow Tanya talking about accomplishments because I think sometimes, especially in the work I do, and I don't know about our um, our participants, but especially for me, a lot of my work is very long term and I don't really see results immediately. Um, but I love, I'm results driven. And so sometimes I have to find those results and, and those accomplishments in my personal life. And so it's creating artwork, it's uh, working on projects in the yard, but accomplishing things. Um, and, and I think sometimes people look at artwork and they kind of feel a little daunted or they feel like they you know, they're not good enough, or especially if you're kind of OCD like I am, if you haven't been properly trained and you, you feel like the what you're doing isn't really, um, you know, isn't really up to the level that you'd like it to be, um, sometimes you kind of have to, to, to force yourself not to be picky about it. And so one project that I really love is called a blind contour drawing. You can do it anytime, anywhere. Uh, you basically take two sheets of paper, uh, you uh, take a pen and you cover up your hand with one sheet of paper and you look at something. Uh, sometimes if you want to do it by yourself first, uh, you can look in a mirror, but you draw what's in front of you without lifting the pen up um, and you don't look. So there's none of that, you know, picking it apart as you go or deciding it doesn't look right. And you don't look at it until you feel like you're finished. 
And when you pull it out, sometimes they look really strange. They look, you know, kind of monstrous, but there's this really cool creative quality and you've got a finished drawing because you finished going around the face and you finished putting all the features in. They may not be where they're supposed to be, but it really has this, this cool kind of creative quality. And I feel like sometimes that's a good way for people to kind of get started making things and doing art because I think sometimes that is a hurdle. There are many of us, uh, especially in certain professions, who, who are very meticulous about things and we want things to be a certain way. Uh, and sometimes with art, you know, there's a certain amount of not being able to control the material and the material does what the material wants to do. And that can be kind of frustrating for folks. So, so art, I think, is a great way to treat yourself. It's something you can do really quick. Um, I love going outdoors, but sometimes you got to get in the car and you got to drive there. You got to get there somehow to do that with art. You can just sit down somewhere and work on a drawing. You can sit down and work on a painting. Um, and, and just because it, the other thing is too, I think people sometimes will work on artwork with the assumption that they're going to share it with others, but you don't have to. No one says that everybody has to see the drawings you make or everybody has to see the paintings that you do. Um, you, you can just do them for yourself. You can hide them away. Uh, there's been some great artwork that's been discovered after people pass away and we find out that, you know, they were, they were doing artwork every day and then they were just hiding it away and it was just for them. Uh, and some of it's just amazing. And so, so don't feel like you're not doing some great piece of artwork because it's really just for you and it's about your expression. Um, and not to get into too many studies, but we also know that with kids, I have four teenagers. I just, my final teenager just turned a teenager May 1st. And all my kids are engaged in some form of creative artwork. And it's not necessarily because that's my background. I think it's because it's such a great coping mechanism. It's such a great way for, especially teenagers who are going through a lot of changes and they're trying to figure themselves out and figure life out. And now with the coronavirus and this isolation from their friends, you know, there's a lot of things they're trying to work out and doing it in some way where they're creating artwork is a great way. And I don't ask to look at it. You know, actually they don't want me to look at it because they're afraid I'll critique it because of my art background, but you know, they just keep it to themselves and they all have, you know, kind of sketchbooks and they do some work on the computer and things, but it's a real great way for them to just kind of let things out. Um, and so I think that's true for us too. I think sometimes we kind of need that escape um, and, uh, and you never know, you might create a great piece of art that you really want to share. Um, so I want to leave plenty of room for questions. I know we're getting close on time. Um, but uh, so my background is kind of the create one. And, and I really think that, you know, take time for yourself and, you know, you can work on a drawing on the side while you're working on your Zoom calls. I mean, it can be a good way to kind of release some stress in between Zoom calls is to kind of have a little drawing off to the side of your desk. Thank, thank you all. I um I see some things happening in the chat box, and I've jotted down some some thoughts and and ideas myself. So one of the first things I think Bethany answered this, but um, Becca Price, could you share the apps again? Would you put those in the chat box so that? Um, yes, okay. I'd be happy to. I'll type those in right now. But it's Aura and Calm. And I know I saw um, Bethany put those. In the, in the chat box as well. So as you have thoughts or questions, please go ahead and put those um, in the chat box. I see um, Adam Downing, did you post something? You posted something, right? I did, yeah. I just wanted to kind of uh, put out there that sometimes um, concerns of safety is a barrier to people interacting with nature. Snakes, bugs, creepy crawly things, you know, poison ivy. And so there certainly are some risks. There's no doubt about that. Probably the best way to mitigate against those is to be aware of them and know how to identify, uh, you know, what poison ivy is. Know that snakes want to see you even less than you want to see them. And, um, and Ticks, that's probably the, one of the bigger ones with some of the diseases they carry now, but uh, you can prevent those by using sprays ahead of time or just real close monitoring after you've been out. Thanks, Adam. Um, and so people are, you know, chatting, they appreciate the thoughts and ideas, the, um, things like that. And if you want to post some things that you are enjoying, just if you're posting in the chat box and you want everyone to see it, 
you'll need to select in the drop down box to post to all panelists and all attendees. If you don't change that, the only people who are seeing your post are those of us who are speaking and some of you have some great ideas that everyone should um, be able to see. Um, I see one that says, this has been awesome and will give me more things to add to my me time. Thank you all so much. Um, I love this this morning. Um, I hear some things about art being very therapeutic. I think that the art is good for the soul. So things are um, popping up there. Gardening, flowers. Um, Adam Hodges, someone said they've done chalk art on the driveway. They pour pouring paint and wood burning. I Using saw that. Those are great. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some pictures online of people doing the chalk art with kids. That's it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So my kids yesterday. So it's Teacher Appreciation Week, and um, my kids yesterday. The um, the request was to send teachers something with some um, um, sidewalk chalk art, right? And if they could also post a video where they were showing their art and doing something and they told them, encourage them to be creative, you know, do something that shows your personality and, and be creative. So, um, and my third and fifth grader really enjoyed, enjoyed doing that. So um, I see things that are actively popping up over here in the chat box. Um, someone says they've been taking advantage of exercising in a local state park, which has really been great for their physical and mental health. Um, some others are sharing some cooking, um, sites and looking at trying new recipes. Yeah, I, I'm just grateful to the um, panelists who were on. You know, we've had some topics, you know, last Friday and then a special session on Wednesday, you know, talking about mental health. And we had, um, you know, counselors and mental health specialists on those sessions. And so we know that if that is a need, um, you know, then certainly it's important to identify that and be able to have those resources. And I'll um, put a slide that's been shared earlier, um, but for for all of us being able to take some time to do those things that are going to re-energize us, keep us motivated, keep us um, encouraged and recharged, um, they're different for each one of us. And that's why I asked the panelists to come on and share because they are making these things happen um, in their lives. They're doing great programming and great work and they are all recharging in um, some similar and some different ways. So we hope that in this time you've gained some some strategies, some some thoughts, you've been um, encouraged in this. And I'm going to tell you Adam Downey, my third grade daughter, I don't know if entomology is in her future or not, but she has enjoyed thoroughly really getting down close and studying bugs. <laughs> So, awesome. Yes. And, um, and she celebrated her birthday on Saturday. So we made it a, a B, like the letter B theme. And we did a birthday bike ride at a park. So we did a birthday bike ride at Bird Park. Um, and my husband bought her binoculars nice. and bought her sister, her 11 year old sister, also a set so they could do bird watching together. Wow. Yeah. So this is how we celebrated her birthday. And she has really enjoyed that. Um, and you know, uh, and my 11 year old daughter is finding, um, she loves art anyway, but she's really been finding art, um, you know, very therapeutic art and music mm -hmm. are two, the two things she's been finding really, um, therapeutic for her right now. And then the time together and the time in, and we've all been, um, and I'm not a cook. My, my husband is our primary cook and I'm so grateful because I don't really enjoy <laughs> doing in the kitchen doing much, but we have been doing some family, um, you know, cooking together. So anyway. that's funny. We talked about that. I think Crystal, that I'm yeah. the cook in the house too. Yeah. So <laughs> cooking the drummer and, you know, I guess it all goes together. I think there's a lot of creativity involved in cooking. Yeah. Um, so it kind of is a way to express yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I want to um, thank everyone for being here today. And next week we're going to um, be again on this channel, same same time, we're going to talk about um, ways to keep kids, you know, physically active, keep them engaged in their learning, knowing that that's going to look different for, you know, everyone's different situation and keeping them safe um, as they're engaging more in online opportunities. So at this point, I just want to thank everyone. Thank you so much to the panelists for coming and sharing um, some of your thoughts and ideas. Thank you to everyone for being on with us today. 
We will send out this recording link and an invitation to the next session to everyone who's registered for this. And you can access this recording and any other previous recordings and a whole plethora of great resources and information at our Virginia Cooperative Extension website. So thanks to everyone. Hopefully you have a new idea to try to take care of yourself. And we hope that you enjoy this weekend. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks Make some art this weekend. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.